Okay, so sorry about that sudden break in the last video. I just wanted to start this one fresh. So yeah, we're going to add a little bit of detail here in this bottom piece as well as this guy right here. So as always, we can start with a simple single vertex. Make sure we're in vertex mode and then just pull that to the front a little bit and back to the front view. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of grab it over here. E to extrude. And if we hold control, we can snap it at these increments. I think right about here should be okay. Maybe pull it up a bit and then just extrude straight across on the X. I don't know, something around here should be okay. All right, and then all I want to do is just extrude this straight down and then fill in these four vertices and then just cut straight through like that with the E key to extrude. And then of course, tab into object mode, shift select the weapon, control. This time I'm going to use, I think, a slice. So control forward slash on the number pad to get that. Oh, and one thing worth mentioning, I didn't do it at the beginning of the course. I should have done it, but um, I'll just mention it now, is if you're about to do a Boolean command and you want a list of the different commands you can do with a bool tool, if you press control shift and B, it'll bring up this menu here. And uh, the auto boolean is basically a destructive boolean, meaning if I use a difference, for example, and go into edit mode, it actually applies that boolean there. So we don't usually want to use that. I mean, sometimes we will, but most of the time we want to stick with the brush boolean and use, you know, a difference or a union there. So in this case, I wanted to do a, what was it, a slice? I just wanted to show that menu in case you ever got lost as to what the commands were. And then we can just kind of mess about with this cutter, maybe move it over a bit. And I think that'll be okay. So we'll just press the M key, move that guy to the cutters collection. So now we have a slice. We'll mess about with that more later once we deal with bevels and such. And then down here, I want to do one more, I think. Now I want to do another cutter here on the bottom. So add in the single vert as usual, move it out and then We'll cut a certain design in here as well. So I'm going to press E to extrude, go up to about here, extrude again. I don't know, maybe around here should be okay. And then I'm just going to extrude straight up like this. That should be all right. And then we'll just kind of close the cutter off by extruding over and then down and then just kind of filling in the cutter here. And we'll just extrude straight through this guy, kind of like that. And then at this point, we can just tab into object mode and then shift select this piece. And once again, control forward slash to add in the slice operation. So now we have this, which is pretty cool. We can really do whatever we want with it, maybe move it this way. It's kind of like a lightning bolt. I like this design. Now I want to show you another really cool trick you can do with slices. So. First off, let me move this guy to the cutters collection. So with slices, you can actually make really cool indented effects with it. So uh, the, the way you do this, you have to go destructive, meaning you have to apply the modifier. So um, there's no way around it because if we go into edit mode now, none of the information is actually applied. So we want to actually apply the Boolean here for this piece. But you're gonna notice that we can't actually apply it. It's grayed out. And this happens sometimes. I've seen a lot of my students run into this issue. It's very easy. If your boolean is grayed out and you can't apply it, go to this green triangle panel. It's for the object data. And then if you click on this little button over here, there's just a number next to the name. Just click on that and then you can apply the boolean. So once you apply the boolean, you'll see that we actually have access to this underlying geometry here, which is exactly what we were going for. And you just want to be careful whenever you apply booleans because when you apply booleans you're going destructive which means you can't move the cutter around anymore. This geometry is basically locked in so I usually only go destructive when I don't plan to make any additional changes or the changes are very easy to make. Uh, so at this point I'm just going to tab into edge mode, shift select this edge, this bottom edge here, and then on the other side shift select that one. Now check this out, if we press Control and B, well it looks really weird right now. Now my guess is it's not beveling right because of a normals issue. So if your bevels ever come out weird like this, it's probably because your normals are incorrectly oriented. 
And you can check that by going to the overlays panel here and going to face orientation. And let's see. Looks like everything's showing up okay. Well, you know what, let's just give it a try. Select everything with the A key. Let's press Shift and N. That'll recalculate the normals and let's just see if it bevels right now. Yeah, I guess it does, okay. So yeah, it was a normals issue. So, you know, you can check the orientation or just <laughs> do what I did. Shift N to recalculate it with everything selected. And now if we press Control B, we're gonna get this really cool looking bevel here. Um, where do I wanna pull it to? Maybe right about here. So now we kind of have this cool little ridge in there. I think that looks nice. So you know, this is just a cool little effect I like to add in here and there. It's a pretty common hard surface design, so it's super easy if you combine a slice with a bevel on one of those slices. You can get these cool little notch effects. I'm quite a fan of them. Now I want to add a little bit of a design over here on the left, so I'm just going to go into front view with one on the number pad, or you know, tilde key if you want to use that. Let's add in yet another single vertex, and vertex mode, move it out a bit and then maybe position it right about here. Right here should be okay, I think. So what I'm going to do here is extrude across the X, maybe about here, extrude in this direction. I don't want it to go too far, maybe about here, and then extrude straight down. Now I don't want this to intersect near this vertex here, I just want it to kind of be in a better location. So let me just move everything, select everything with the A key, move it over some more, maybe even move it up so we can kind of see what type of cutout we'll have. I think around here should be okay, maybe let's pull these up some more and pull these guys over. I think that'll be okay for now. And then we'll just kind of enclose this cutter like this, fill it, and then extrude straight through. Now same drill as usual, tab into object mode, shift select the weapon, and then we'll do another slice, so control and forward slash to add in a slice like that, and then we'll just move this guy over to the cutters collection. Now what I think would be cool is if we added in a little cylinder here, kind of fused to the mesh, so you know what, let's do that. Let's press shift A and then add in a cylinder, 32 vertices is fine, and then I'm just going to rotate this guy 90 degrees over the X, and I think I'll put the cylinder, I don't know really, maybe about here, something like that, and then we can scale it out on the Y, that looks okay. Now to get this guy fused to this guy, so that way they're just like one physical mesh, we can just shift select these and then control and plus on the number pad. That'll perform a union. So now if we move this cutter, you're gonna see that this piece is actually physically union to this one. This is one entire mesh. So that's uh, precisely the goal we were going for there. Now it's actually not fused to this part of the gun, so that's you know might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, depending on what we're going for. But yeah, I only wanted the cylinder to be connected to this piece, so now it'll just kind of be hanging out over here on the main one. Now one additional design I think we could do is maybe add in, you know what, I think it'll be easier to demonstrate visually, so I'm actually going to shift and right click to move the 3D cursor over here, roughly in the center of the cylinder, and I'm going to add in yet another cylinder, and we'll rotate it 90 degrees over the X, scale it down. Now I kind of want to see where this is positioned, it's hard to tell. Uh, let me go into wireframe. So you can kind of see the distance between the border of this cylinder and the cylinder that just got fused together. I want kind of a little bit of a gap here. This has a nice aesthetic purpose, so let me scale this up some more like that, and then we'll just kind of scale this on the Y so that way it's going through. And then I'll shift select this piece and then we'll do another slash operation, control and forward slash, and move this cutter to the cutters collection. So now we kind of have this little, it's like a border almost, kind of containing the cylinder. I think it looks quite nice. Cool, so here's where we are so far. I'll just uh, turn off the overlays here so you can see it. 
pretty good progress and you can already kind of see how it has that sci-fi look to it. Not a lot of detail, it'll come together the more we do these videos, but you know, so far it looks really, really good.